Hello everybody, welcome to VeeamON 2021. You're watching theCUBE's continuous coverage of this year's event. My name is Dave Vellante, and as the saying goes, you can go faster alone, but further together. And that observation is most certainly true in the technology business. And with me to talk about the importance of partners and ecosystem expansion and leverage are Daniel Fried, who's the Senior Vice President for EMEA and Worldwide Channels at Veeam, and David Harvey, who's the Vice President of Strategic Global Alliances at Veeam. Gentlemen, Welcome to theCUBE, come on inside. Thank you, Dave. Thanks a lot, thank you. So you're welcome. So Daniel, about 40 partners by my count at, at Veeamon Virtual this year, wow. Uh, you know, and it's, it's unfortunate we can't you know, interact with them face to face, but part of the story here, 25% ARR growth and partners, obviously big contributor there. Give us the update from your perspective. Well, yeah, so first of all, I think it's going to be much more uh, uh, much more than, than the 40 partners uh, that are going to attend VeeamON because it's a key event that we've had already for a number of years. And this one this year is going to be as huge as, as usual, even bigger because it is all remote so everybody can participate. Now going to the results of the company, it is entirely also due to the partners. Uh, all types of partners because we are 100% partner based. We are a channel company. So all our businesses go through the partners uh, to which are to the end customers all different types of partners. So I do thank very, very much all partners around the world, but all types of partners, because they all participate to the success of, uh, of Veeam Software and this fantastic 25% growth, indeed. Yeah, so David, that's pretty important when you send that message, hey, we're not, I mean, a lot of companies, a lot of tech companies struggle with that. They have a heritage of direct sales and they say, hey, we're super partner friendly. And then they do a big reach around. I mean, you, you, you kind of clean that up from, from day zero, but maybe talk a little bit about your philosophy uh, around partnering. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's been a core pillar, as you said, Dave, of Beam from day one. And we've been true to that message all the way through. And when you look at the rich ecosystem of the pro partner network that Daniel was talking about, and you also look at the way that we've embraced alliances, not only from the technology integration point of view, but also within the go to market position, uh, it's just been a really rich experience uh, for the Veeam field the alliances and partner field, but more importantly for the customers because they get the best of breed from both sides. They get peace of mind on supply chain, but fundamentally, and you touched on this point, Dave, a lot of people talk about it in principle. We live it all day, every day. And I think when you look at the rich experience that you're going to get from Veeamon, when you look at the fact that the Alliance partners have lent in as the premium sponsors, these are the biggest guys in the industry. It's just a testament to trust and it's a testament to delivering value to the customers. How should we think about the sort of partner makeup? And I'm interested in, in particularly the, the perspective from EMEA, but I mean, a lot, a number of the partners, you know, the majority of the premier partners, for example, are US based companies, but of course they have very strong presence around the world. Uh, and then of course, within, within EMEA, Daniel, you've got a lot of local partners as well. How should we think about that makeup, the big whales who account for, you know, many, many tens of millions, hundreds of millions of dollars, uh, but as well, the collective of the larger ecosystem. How, how should we think about that pyramid? Well, this is a fantastic question. I think, I think that we, we have to go back into understanding what is the role of a partner. The role of partner is to reach out to the end customers. And because Veeam is selling to companies which are very small ones, very small SMB customers, all the way to the very large complex multinationals, uh, we need partners who have these capabilities to address all those. And of course, the number of companies around the world, you know, it's hundreds of millions of them. Um, to give you an idea, because of the partners, our coverage is more than 100 countries. In other words, we sell to more than 100 countries around the world, even in places where our Veeam presence, physical presence, uh, is not there. Um, so this is this is we need different types of partners depending on what is what is needed, what the customers are requesting. And this is reason we we talk we talk about the pro partner network. But I would like to, to talk to go even further and talk about an ecosystem, a business ecosystem using the Veeam solutions and the Veeam technologies uh, with, with the alliances, with the system integrators, with the VARs, with the resellers, and with the service providers, with all different types of typologies of partners. And it is not a monolithic way of doing businesses. So you've got huge companies, but you have a lot of small ones to be capable to uh, not to sell to a uh, mom and dad shop somewhere in the, in the middle of the desert you know, or, you know, somewhere around the world uh, but we also need to have competencies because customers have requests that become more and more complex because 
because the world is becoming more and more complex from an IT perspective. So we need to have competencies. And this is what we're trying in this uh, pro partner network of this software is to bring these competencies up to be capable through the partners to answer all the requests and all the needs of all the customers around the world. So David, it's not just sort of generic. I mean, obviously as a hundred percent a channel partner, a company, you're looking for volume and distribution, um, but 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 as, as Daniel just said, there's competencies. So what are some of the competencies that partners bring to the table? Maybe you have some examples that you can share. Yeah, absolutely. So if you look at a couple of different areas, uh, what I would say is we look at the problems that customers are dealing with in two ways. One, they're dealing with the fact that they want a technology solution to something that they're dealing with today. And secondly, they want somebody to support them with a human uh, workflow evolution that's going on with them today. And GSIs is a good example of that one. Um, when you look at the work we're doing and the success we're having with the large global GSIs, what we're solving in that area is two things. Workplace optimization, huge topic at the moment. And secondly, the data center modernization. And what's happening as you go through that evolution is you're dovetailing together the workflows of their business. You're using data as a lifeblood to be able to be successful and relate to their share price, et cetera. But more importantly, you want to make sure that you're bringing into account both those sides. You can't just have a technology solution without an understanding of implement implementation, and you can't have a great concept without a solid solution to back that up. So that's where we dovetail together the top alliances that are out there in the market with the top global systems integrators and both of those combined solutions benefit everybody including the channel but obviously more importantly the customer and i think when you look at that the work we're doing with accenture with cap gemini the work we're doing with guys like hpe and vmware and all these um large uh, thought leaders that's where it's a really nice dovetail and as we talked about before because that's been the lifeblood of our organization from day one it's a very harmonious experience focused on solving the customer pain so I like that focus on solutions. I'm just, I'm just thinking about, uh, so, okay, workplace optimization. You think about remote work. I mean, everybody's mm -hmm. trying to figure out hybrid now. How do I get hybrid right? And, and of course you guys fit in. What's the right data protection model? Uh, modernization, there's app modernization. There's, there's there, because of cloud, there's a rethink of how you protect data. Maybe it's additional layers. And then of course, I mean, every time I look in the paper, there's another hit of ransomware or, or some, some cybersecurity attacks. So you guys fit yeah. in there. So, so there's, this, there's this solution emphasis, uh, which really dovetails nicely into the customer problem. Maybe you could talk a little bit about that and the role that partners play and what role you play. We play the role that we play is obviously, and, and David will complement uh, obviously my response because it can be a very large ex extended expanded answer. Uh, we, the, role, the role we play is, is, I would say, twofold. Just try to be uh, to simplify as much as, as much as we can, as much as I can. One one of them is to provide a technology to provide solutions, and this is number one. So Veeam is providing solutions to and customers through the partners, but the partners they have these competencies which allow them to build solutions and services to answer the requests and the needs of the customers. So this is the key thing. They generate a value add on top of our technologies, on top of our solutions uh, to meet what the customers request. And you're totally right because you know we, we, we talk about, um, uh, about the marketplace, we talk about a lot of things, but what is very important is we see more and more customers wanted to go to services so not for themselves to manage their infrastructures and their data centers and their backups, their, their, uh, everything which is linked to the security of the data, but to have it done by uh, potentially third party companies like the system integrators, like the cloud and service providers, like you know, all different types of companies, uh, even some consultants um, giving advices, architectures, enablement, and all kinds of different services which are being built. I even had uh, some partners that are now developing, we talk about containers more and more, and we have, and you know, I'm, I'm sorry to be a little bit technical here, but we have some partners, some VARs, um, you know, obviously some larger ones, which are developing what we call microservices, which is for uh, this new generation of, of containers. So they are all developing services to meet the requests and the needs of their customers. There is a big focus at end customers. How can together we? So we provide the technology, they are, they are by you. Well, I don't think you ever have to apologize on the cube for talking tech. Um, and, and so, I mean, you think about containers um, and, and your acquisition of Kasten, the whole notion of microservices, 
you know, containers that used to be ephemeral and stateless, and now, you know, they're becoming a fundamental application development platform and they need protection. So I think that's an important area. We're going to dig into that in some other uh, conversations in the queue. But your point, Daniel, about value add is critical. You know, it used to be, I, I, you know, I call it box selling, even though it's, you know, and this is the, 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 the software is in a box, but it used to be, okay, I'm going to make some margin just reselling. Partners today want to add value. You know, they just don't want to be a, a pass-through because you know, <laughs> they'll get disintermediated. So that's important. I wonder if you guys could talk about the, the, some of the details uh, of your, your, your partner programs. There's the Pro Partner Network, and I'm, all, I'm very interested in the Veeam Universal License uh, approach that you guys take. What, what kind of details can you share with us on, on those two things? Daniel, that's one good one for you. <laughs> right. Okay. <laughs> so the uh, the, uh, the the view, what we call the view, the Vim Universal Licensors. Um, so this is part of the technology that we provide, and the licensing model that we provide is about recurring uh, licensing model, which is totally agnostic. So in other words, it is the same types of licensors uh, that customers can use. Uh, for you know, whether if they are uh, hybrids and you know, if they go with an, ar an architecture which goes on hybrid clouds or, uh, or or any type of architecture or on premise or so they can just move their licenses from one place to another place when they need it. So we give them the full flexibility with this licensing model uh, to adapt to the new needs that they may have. So to avoid that, they define um, an architecture which is totally frozen and then they cannot change it anymore with us, with our technologies, with our licensing model, with our real licensing system, they can, you know, they have a full flexibility. And, and this is a key differentiator for a lot of customers and obviously from our own competition. And, and my understanding is when you guys really started leaning into the ARR model, you actually were, were pretty innovative in the way you kind of made that um, transparent or, or, or irrelevant really for your partner's sales channels. You guys, you guys said up front, we're going <laughs> to, this is like no change, go sell. We'll figure out the economics on the back end. Um, and, and most organizations in your position don't do that. They try to micromanage the, the margin up front. And it's, it's sort of the, you know, the, the finance guys running the spreadsheet are sort of determining the relationship as opposed to the relationship working backwards. Is that a correct inference on my part? I sort of got this from talking to some of your big partners and asking them, well, isn't that a real challenge when you shift to that model? They said, no, Veeam just sort of made it all transparent to us and sort of ate it at the back end or however you did that. So, so I think I, I think that, that this, this is a very, very correct statement that you got from, from the partners because it is not something which is new and it is not only on this uh, uh, subscription licensing model. Uh, that we have that what we try, what we always try to do with all partners uh, is to have a consistent approach and a very transparent approach with the steps, you know, move step by step to the next level, to the next, uh, to the next strategies, to, to the next uh, ways of doing businesses with them. So the key thing uh, to have a, a network of partners uh, which works, uh, which, which really uh, develop and generates a good value add, it is the trust. And I think I don't want to be too arrogant, but I think, and, and David or, you know, can give his feedback, I think that we've succeeded you know, year after year and after year to build that trust with the partners, which means that with the transparency, they just move along uh, with the moves that we do, but our moves also come from them. So in other words, depending on what the end customers requests, we help the partners to, uh, to, to meet the request of the end customers. So right. we help them develop more businesses. David, let me ask you something. So if you had $100 to spend of resource and you had to spend it on going deeper sort of with the existing partners or expanding that, that the, the number of partners and, and maybe even the, you know, the quality of partners and thinking about where IT is headed, Veeam's role in that, how do you allocate your time and your resources Great question. And I think you, simple answer for me, you go deeper with what you have. And, and the reason for that is it's expensive and it's about building trust, as Daniel said, and it's about making sure that the customer isn't caught up in the middle of it. And I think that's the really important part related to this as well. You said at the start of the conversation, Dave, with regards to the complexity and the reality is there's multiple decisions going on right now. 
how do I adjust my infrastructure based on the needs of today? How do I look at the blend on hybrid cloud? What's going where, et cetera? How do I evolve into containers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And I think when you go down that line and you're presented with, you know, these titans of industry that we're looking at here with some of our premium alliances, et cetera, it takes a long time to make sure that you integrate. It takes a long time to make sure your go to market and pain based statements are clear. It takes a long time to go through the trenches, to learn together so that the customer is the one that has choice, doesn't have to investigate the way that Veeam wants to do it or our alliance wants to do it or our partner wants to do it. It's about looking at the best solution for their pain. And I think from that point of view, you can only do that with continual commitment. I mean, we add to our program in all aspects, but you'll see consistency. You'll see releases from day one of the company when we launch the product with alliances as an example. That consistency in an investment is peace of mind, it's trust, but more importantly, it's innovative because you get to invest for multiple years moving forwards so that ideally we can continue our philosophy of being just ahead of what the customer needs while listening to them and working with that other parts of the IT infrastructure. Because as you said from the start again, this is an ecosystem. This is not a singular component. And I think that's where it's really key to have a philosophy, which we have here in Veeam, which is double down with your friends, make sure you make it work, look to evolve as the market evolves with some extension, but you never forget where you came from. I like that answer because it was it was kind of a loaded question because when I talk to a lot of companies, you know, behind the scenes, one of their big frustrations is, if, you know, there's a push to get more and more and more, but in reality, when they look at the productivity, it's like a snake swallowing a basketball. They got a few partners that are really productive and then the rest, and they're spending all this time doing Barney press releases. I love you, you love me, and da, da, da. nothing ever happens out of it. So, so okay, so when you, when, you th when you approach a strategic partnership, you know, why Veeam? Pitch me on why I should spend my time with Veeam versus one of the many other competitors that, that are out there. 100%, I mean, and that's, that's the great thing. One is, we're proven from a history point of view. And there's nothing better than when you're talking to a strategic partner than to be able to say, you've put your money where your mouth is. Secondly, that money is key. We invest heavily and it is expensive. It's an expensive scenario. I mean, our alliances organization globally is almost 100 people. Uh, it's a big investment position because you've got to make sure that you've got the ability to balance out what both sides are looking for. And sometimes you do things that maybe aren't 100% in your best interest, but that's important to your partner and your alliance and vice versa. And so from that point of view, you've got history and proven position. You've got investment potential and uh, capital to be able to build together uh, to, uh, to move forward. And thirdly, it's about the proven execution. And that's not just your philosophy where I started. This is about the ability to turn concept into tangible, frankly, benefit, which comes down to economics for both sides. And those three things together, uh, to me, are the way that we've been so successful in not only growing and maintaining our position, but also attracting new ones as we look to see the evolution of the IT market. Daniel, you may have a different view. Oh, no, 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 no. I just would like to, no, no, I totally agree. I just would like to complement it by, by two things. Uh, the two things are very ma much marketing related. Um, we are number two now worldwide, mm -hmm. as IDC mentioned it. So in other words, that means that customers like our technologies, our solutions. So partners are looking for, you know, making businesses with somebody who is trusted also with their customers. Uh, and, and number two, uh, we have a big marketing machine. Uh, and that helps very, very, very much the business uh, to, you know, through the partners all the way to the end customers. We always involve the partners, always systematically. I saw some and of that. Oh, sorry to interrupt. I saw some of that IDC <laughs> data. You guys are number two worldwide, but am I correct that you're the number one, like pure play independent or, or am I missing something there? Uh, yeah, number one, yeah. Number one in EMEA, I have to say. Right, I mean, that's, right. You know, and so I, I always ask that because a lot of times other people, I, you know, it's like cloud washing. I could throw a bunch of stuff in my cloud numbers and say, oh, I'm number one in cloud. But, but you know, when you, when you talk about Veeam, all your revenue comes from, from backup data protection. I mean, that's sort of, sort of the pure play. We, we love the pure plays because they're easier to understand. And, you know, even though you guys are a private company, you're, you're more transparent than most private companies. So um, it's helpful as an analyst to really kind of gauge uh, the progress. So, okay guys, hey, we got to leave it there. Thanks so much for coming on and talking about the all important partner ecosystem. You guys have done a great job there. Congratulations. And uh, I, I hear it from your, your partners and, and obviously the numbers prove it out. So great job.
Great. Thanks, Thanks Dave. Dave. Thanks for your time today. All right, you're very welcome, and thank you for watching, everybody. This is Dave Vellante for theCUBE's continuous coverage of VeeamON 2021, the virtual edition. Keep it right there for more great content.